On that first flight, Captain Russell Tapp was the skipper. I was first officer. Glenn Mumford was radio operator and uh, Clark was the engineer. We departed Perth at around about 4 a.m. in the morning. We had about a 10 mile run from Nedlands to the bridge at Fremantle. And we'd start off with full power and the hull very low in the water. And as we managed to get up onto the step, we'd lift the wingtip floats uh, to gain extra lift. And we'd often clear the bridge at Fremantle by no more than 100 feet or so. I often used to think that the people at Fremantle must have wondered when we were going to hit them. I think we were all so keyed up that I don't think any of us took it much time off. We were aware that we were doing something that had never been done before and it was very exciting and I don't recall any time off on that trip. We sighted Lake Coggler and Russell landed us on the water and we taxied over to the Air Force Base to be met by the uh, Air Force personnel and congratulated on the fact that we'd actually managed to do what the aviation authorities in Australia had considered to be impossible. The feeling of, uh, well, the feeling of success, we'd done it. Captain Russell Tapp and his crew had just broken Japan's Indian Ocean blockade of Australia. Top secret Allied communications were now travelling between the two countries. Upon arrival, the passengers received a certificate of membership to the rare and secret order of the Double Sunrise. Thank you.